A very good morning to you all. Welcome back to Dr. Vipin's classroom. And today we talk about a very basic form of alignment of strings. Uh, we talk about what is known as the Hamming distance. What is Hamming distance? So when you're considering two strings of exactly the same length, the number of positions where they differ from each other is what is going to give you the Hamming distance. Number of positions where two strings of the same length differ from each other, right? So what we'll do is we'll take input from the user for two DNA sequences of the same length and then calculate the number of positions where there are differences between the two. Here is the first one. We say DNA1 is equal to input, and then in brackets and double quotes, we print the statement so that the user is prompted to submit a DNA sequence. So you say submit DNA1. Let's run this here. So we submit here AATTGGCC, right? And you press enter. And remember, again, an important rule in programming is that when you're testing your program, give uh, inputs that you can manually calculate and then check whether your program output is correct or not, right? So therefore we give a simple sequence here, AATTGGCC for the first DNA. Uh, as you can see, this is eight bases in length. So the next sequence also has to be eight bases in length. So we now submit the second sequence. You run it here. So here we submit AAGGTTCC. So this green mark indicates that your submission process is over and DNA2 has taken up the value of AAGGTTCC. So before moving on to calculate the Hamming distance, let's see how do we access individual nucleotides in a DNA string. So let's print DNA1 for our reference. So we say print DNA1. Now let's say you want to access the second nucleotide in this string, right? So to access individual characters in a string, you have to give the name of the string, and in square brackets, you have to mention the index. So indexing in Python begins with zero. So therefore, if you want to access the second nucleotide into the string, the index for that will be n minus one, that is one. Right? So you say print and you give the index in the square bracket, that is one here, a. If you want to access the first a, you could write index of zero. This will still give you a value of A because at the zeroth index there is a A here. If you want to access this last cytosine here, that is as index of seven because you have eight nucleotides. Thus you could say print DNA one and you could say seven, right? And this will be in square brackets. Right. So you could run this again and now for zero you'll get an A and for index seven, you will get a cytosine, right? You could also have printed the last element in the string by using minus one notation. So if you see here, you could say print DNA one, and you could have said minus one, right? So if you run this now, you'll get the third C, which will be again, representing the last cytosine here. Right. What I essentially want to tell you here is how do you access the individual elements in a string? Now coming back to calculating the Hamming distance, right? So what we have to do essentially here is to look at the same position in two strings and compare the values. If they're different, the Hamming distance increases by a increment of one. Uh, we are basically checking if the two DNA sequences are of the same length or not. We say if len DNA one, that will give you the length of the first string is the same as double equal to means you are comparing the value on the left hand side of the equation with the right hand side of the equation for equality is equal to the length of the dna two right if it is then follow these steps this will be followed only when this condition is met otherwise you say else and then you just print a simple statement saying dna length mismatch and because if there is a DNA length mismatch, you cannot calculate the Hamming distance. So now we come to what happens when you actually have the two strings of the same length, which is going to be the case here. So we say if len DNA1 double equals to len DNA2 colon, and once you give a colon, automatically when you type the next statement, it will come with an indent. Remember, Python follows indent, right? Indent means that something within an indent of an other statement means that this is part of the statement on the top right so here you are the next statement comes with an indent which means this is a sub part of this particular statement so if this is true 
then follow these statements. Else, come up here. So only when this condition is met, do you actually follow these statements here. So if this is true, what we're doing is we are first initiating a counter to a value of zero. So we say count equals to zero. Remember, this is single equal to. Single equal to is assignment. So we're assigning a value of zero to the variable name count. Then what we do is we run a loop for i in range len DNA one, right? So which means it is going to run as many times as the length of your first string, which is also the same as the length of the second string. So therefore, uh, now you can use i as your index to compare individual positions in these two strings and see whether they are equal or unequal. If they are unequal, you increment by one and that helps you calculate the Hamming distance. So here we are, we use a loop, we say for i in range, len DNA one. So now the value of i will be first zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, and then finally seven. So here you have another notation. This is basically an exclamation mark and equal to what does this indicate? This is indicative of not equal to. So what you're checking is if DNA one at index zero, let's say the loop is running for the first time, is not the same as DNA2 index zero. If they are not equal, then you increment the counter by one. And then you also print the, the index, the nucleotide in the first DNA string at that particular index, and also the nucleotide at the second DNA string at that particular index. So once your for loop is over, you are printing your actual Hamming distance, which will basically be the value that, that is held by the count because count is getting incremented every time your uh, difference is there at the same index in the two DNA sequences. And if this is not true, then of course you come to else statement and you're directly printing DNA length mismatch. So because of which you cannot actually calculate the Hamming distance here. So let's run this to see how this works. So here we are, we are looking at this block now, the if and else block, where we also put up a for loop to iterate over the individual positions in the string. So let's print our two DNA strings for reference. So we say print DNA one, print DNA two, right? So here we are. So let's run it now and see what we get here. So here are our two DNA strings. The first one, DNA one, a, A, T, T, D, G, C, C. Then the second one, A, A, this is same to the first one. Then from index two onwards, there is a difference. Index two, index three is different. Index four is different. Index five is also different. And then index six and index seven are the same. And so this is what is getting reported. Index two, the DNA one has a thymine. The DNA two has a guanine. Likewise, index three, you have a thymine and DNA one. You have a guanine and DNA two. Index four, you have a guanine in DNA one and a thymine in DNA two. Index five, you have a guanine again in DNA one and a thymine in DNA two, right? So, so these are the four positions where the two strings are different from each other. And for each position where there is a difference, you increment your count by one. So therefore, you finally get a value of four as your Hamming distance. So we close this here and we'll talk more about uh, Pandas libraries in the next lecture.